media when emancipation was on its way. The cartoonist is showing the Africans are happy that they're going to get their emancipation. So here are the Africans jumping for joy that they are going to get their freedom. But on the left, you have those who are lining up for their reparations, their compensation. The merchants are lining up for compensation. The financiers are lining up for compensation. The politicians in the House of Commons, the House of Lords, are lining up for their compensation. And the city judges, the judges in the court, who also own slaves, are lining up. So the judges, the politicians, the brokers, the financiers are all lining up for their compensation. And this cartoon tells us all we need to know because they received their compensation, they received their reparations, the African people's got nothing. Why are we focusing our conversation at this time upon the British? Because the British made more money out of slavery than any other European nation. The British did not supply the most Africans to the New World. The Portuguese did that. But the British understood how to convert slavery profits into wealth and how to use slavery to build the British economy. And so the British bled the profits out of the Africans, took those profits back to England, and built England into the first developed nation. So when slavery is ended, Britain is now classified as the richest nation on earth, it's the most industrial nation on earth, it's the one economy in the world that has reached a level of sustainable economic development because of the profits it had made out of the Caribbean. And some of the Jamaican slave owners made so much money. These men, bear in mind, these Jamaican slave owners were known to be some of the richest Englishmen in the world. The Beckford family in Jamaica made more money out of slavery than any other family other than the Harewood family. And of course, the Beckfords were so rich, they had their own castle in England, but they built their own church in England. Because Mr. Beckford said in one of his letters that when I am talking to my God, nobody must hear my conversation. The conversation is, is between me and my God. So I am building my own church and I will speak to God in my own church. No one else will be in there when I'm speaking to my God. And this is after he has made all of this money out of black people in Jamaica. The King of England, slave owner, the King of England actually threatened Wilberforce for speaking about emancipation, abolition. Because slavery was considered to be in the national interest of Britain. Slavery was necessary to keep the British economy going. And for someone to stand up and speak against it, they are speaking against the national interest. And so the king made it clear to Wilberforce, be careful what you say in that parliament. Because in that parliament, you are there to protect the national interest of Britain. And to speak against slavery is to speak against the national interest. And these are all the members of the British royal family, the British parliament. We have the names of all the slave owning families in Britain who sat in the British parliament. We have the names of all of them. These are the families. These are the members of the English aristocracy, where they owned their plantation slaves, and all of the countries where they made their fortunes. Now, this, I hope you can all see this slide in the back. But these are the financial institutions in Great Britain at the end of slavery that were financing slavery. These are the companies that were financing the slave trade and financing slavery. Now, when emancipation comes, these companies would do what you think they would do. They would change their names. They would change their identities. 
they would rebrand as we would say today. You rebrand. And you rebrand and enter into a new phase to cover up your past. But let me show you the companies today that emerge out of these companies. These are the companies that you see today. The slide before are the companies that were there before. These are the rebranded names of those companies. Barclays Bank. Started out of the Barclays Brothers in Jamaica. Royal Bank of Scotland. National Westminster Bank. The Middle Bank. You will see these banks on every street in Great Britain in the city. These are the banks that keep the British economy going. But these are the banks that also finance slavery and finance slavery and committed these crimes against the African peoples. Next one. Well, you heard from the principal that the Church of England was deeply involved in slavery. There were slave traders, their own slaves. And it's interesting that when emancipation came, the largest slave owner in the Caribbean was a priest. The largest, the largest investor in slaves in the Caribbean at emancipation was the Bishop of Exeter. He was the Bishop of Exeter. But he had made more investments in slavery than any other person in Great Britain. Very wealthy man. He had made his fortune he had made his fortune out of slavery as a bishop. And all of the money went back into building parish churches. So when you drive around England and you see many of these little parish churches, those churches were built out of the profits that came out of slavery in Jamaica and in Barbados. Well, emancipation comes and each slave owner is going to be compensated. So you have to prepare an account. So you have to look at your African slaves, enslaved Africans, and you have to put a value on them and go and claim compensation. Go and claim compensation. So you have to get your account book, and if on your plantation you have 400 Africans, you have to put a value on each one. The women are worth this, the men are worth this, the children are worth this, and you calculate the value of each individual and you say, I want compensation because this is my account of my slaves. So, and we have, we have the accounts of these plantations. So we know, we know the value that was placed on all of the enslaved Africans in the Caribbean. As you can see, Jamaica had more enslaved Africans than any other country. So 13 million was the value that was placed on your ancestors. This was the, the, the financial value that was placed on your enslaved ancestors in Jamaica. They were worth 13.9 million pounds. And that is what the slave owners of Jamaica received from the British government, 13.9 million pounds. That is what they received for owning slaves, for owning enslaved persons. And the remarkable thing about this was that the British government sent their accountants down to the Caribbean because they know, they knew that the Jamaican slave owners, the Caribbean slave owners would poke out their eye. They knew they would have their eyes poked out, so they sent down their own accountants to go around to verify that their accounts were accurate. So the British government their own accountant said, the Jamaican Africans are only worth six million pounds. But the Jamaicans said, no, our Africans are worth 13 million. So therein lies a conversation between the owners of the Africans and those who are going to pay the compensation. Now, the slave owners were in charge of the British Parliament. They were in charge of the British Parliament. And they decided that they will compensate themselves, legislate to compensate themselves because they were the ones who controlled the parliament. And they voted 20 
million pounds as compensation to themselves, reparations for themselves, for owning the Africans. And in so doing, almost drove the British government into bankruptcy. Because 20 million pounds, which in today's money, in today's money, that is one, that is about 76, 76 billion pounds in today's money. In today's money, it is 76 billion pounds in today's money. That's what they got for owning Africans. But that 20 million pounds in 1834 represented 40% of the British national expenditure in that year. So they took 40% of the national expenditure and gave it to themselves. Gave it to themselves as compensation. That is worth, in today, 40% of the British national expenditure today is 200 billion pounds. That is what it would be today in today's money. So the slave owners fix up themselves and the African people got nothing. They fix up themselves. Now, this is where we are at right now. The CARICOM governments have established a reparations commission. The CARICOM governments have approved a 10-point plan to frame the conversation around reparations. Effectively, what we are doing is seeking to clean up the mess that Britain have left behind. The conversation is taking place around some of these issues. Let me give you an example of a matter that you must address. When Jamaica became independent in 1962, when this great country became independent in 1962, Britain had been ruling Jamaica from 1655, from 1655 to 1962, the British were ruling this island. And when they left in 1962, 73% of all the black people in Jamaica were illiterate. 73% of all the black people in Jamaica were functionally illiterate when Jamaica became independent. Now, you were then told to go away and develop. Go, you're independent, they'll go and develop. Go and develop. There is no country on God's earth that could develop starting out with three quarters of its people functionally illiterate. It is impossible. The resources that you are now required to eradicate illiteracy and to give the people a chance you have not had those resources available to you. The British government has a responsibility and had a responsibility to make those resources available to Jamaica to eradicate the mess that they have created. 